Mike. Yeah, looking forward to good today. To yeah, and you too. Going to be a good show today. We've got a Heinbook on. Yeah. Learning uh, all about quick change uh, collet chucks and all their adaptations. Yeah, Tega Tech in their technology corner with their Typhoon, typhoon spindle. High speed spindle increaser. Yeah, but this is, I need a cup of tea. It's a cup of tea. Come on, let's get it. Oh, well, no. Oh, Pete's safe. No, no milk. We're going to have to go and get some milk. Come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> Okay, right, Joe, you go and get the cups. Yeah, I'm on it. Come on, mate, I'm gasping. Come on, we haven't got much left. I haven't got much left. So, you were expecting? Yeah, yeah, I've only got a couple of months to go as well, so it's exciting. Oh, I bet you are. <laughs> are you having boy? Or I don't know. You I don't, don't know. know? No. Oh, oh morning. Oh, morning, oh, morning. Oh, morning. Oh, you're right. It's busy morning this morning. Oh, oh. Here's the seat. Oh, thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. You don't, Thank we don't you. normally get this treatment. Special Another treatment. Oh, <laughs> Joe, Joe, which one's the black one? Lindsay's got the black one. Lindsay's got the black one. Oh, look, give me that one. Give me that one. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. It's a brilliant show today. This is what's coming up on today's show. However, Paul and myself are joined by Dave and Dana from Heinbuck. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank Good you. morning. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Yeah, it's been a lovely morning already, actually. Yeah, it has. <laughs> it's been very hectic. <laughs> Entertaining. <Yeah>. Also. <laughs> Well, we're going to kick start, and I'd like to know a little bit more about Heinberg. So, and it's going to be an overview. One minute. Tell us more about Heinberg. More for the UK. Okay. Well, we're Heinberg UK. We're a wholly owned subsidiary of Heinberg Germany. There's six of us over in uh, Canuck, and uh, we sell all the range of Heinberg products to the UK market. The, the, the Heinbuck products, this is a classic example of the products, isn't it? That Absolutely, Paul, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of a demo in a minute because that's, that's what people like to see. But what, what sort of, uh, when you take these products, how much does this represent of your product range? Is there more to it than what we see here? Because this is a quick change system, It correct? is indeed. This is just a small snapshot of what we do. But really, the jewel in the crown for us is the collet chuck. You know, we, we, we do a range of collets up to collet chucks up to 120 millimeter. This is an 80 mil, which this particular one, you can go from four to 80 mil bar size. But you know, the, the key to our product is the quick change, the accuracy of the product, and the fact that you can go from a collet chuck to a mandrel to a three jaw chuck in, in very quick time. So Dana, tell us about the facilities that you've got in the UK. Okay, so we have our UK head office in Hensford, Cannock. Where customers. Is that or <laughs> You're a nightmare. <laughs> Hensford. I can't Hensford. say it now. It's, it's on the verge, isn't okay. it? Um, where customers can come and visit us or they can come and see Nick for advice if they're working on special pieces or they need special equipment to hold the parts. So Nick can design. The, the, the philosophy was always quick change, change over time can be a killer for a lot of uh, companies. So the change over time is crucial. And not only can you change collets quickly, but you know, we look on this collet chuck as almost like a Meccano set, so you can add to it. Mm. So not only is it a collet chuck, it can then be a mandrel for internal clamping, or it can be a three jaw chuck for holding larger billets. We're going to see one of you two, I'm not sure who's the volunteer at the moment, actually change, <laughs> put the different adaptations into, mm -hmm. the, into the chuck. How much time do you think this saves an engineer from old historic methods? A colossal amount of time. I mean, you know, in the past you used to have to sort of unscrew front parts of chucks and get all the swarf out. I'll tell you what, let's do it. Go, go, from, go from your collet to your right. three jaw. So this is, this is the changing gun into the collet. That collapses the collet. And then you've got three pins inside here, which obviously stop the collet rotating. So line the pins up. Push it in, release the collet, that's it. 
What, what about the clamping mechanism there? How secure is that? What's the concentricity? Well, the, the, the chuck will run to within a micron. Right. And this, once it's mounted, is obviously attached to the back of the draw tube. So as soon as you engage the draw tube, the collet pulls back and clamps the part. So is it dependent then on the on the um, the machine tool as to what sort of camp, clamping force? Oh, absolutely, get? yes. But you know, a chuck like this, this is an 18 millimeter chuck, and this will take up to 115 kil uh, new kilonewtons inside the chuck. So let's look at. I mean, you know, I'd be interested to know uh, how many of these that you sell and how many engineers are practicing this sort of method. Because I often still see you go into companies and they've got the collet chuck and they've got their Allen key and they're unscrewing the collets, mm. taking them out. That could take two, three minutes? Oh, easily. And yeah. the rest. Yeah. yeah. And the rest. Well, the thing is, you know, that kind of system's been about for 40 odd years. And a lot of people are used to it. They've got racks full of the stuff. And uh, I guess it's a comfort factor. But the reality now is with modern machine tools, the speed, the accuracy, you need this sort of stuff. Well, I think it is time for the girls. So, Dana, can you change that collet to that three yeah. jaw chuck? Yep. Of <laughs> Please. So, the door model is ideal for use when wanting to clamp billets of a larger size. Obviously the SK80 only goes up to 80 mil, whereas the jaw model goes up to 215 and you have the soft jaws or the hard jaws depending on the clamp range that you want. To. So that goes up to what diameter, sorry? 215 mil. 215 and then from here of course you then attach the, the jaws, the hard jaws and the yes. soft jaws. Yes, yeah, you have the option. The hard jaws come in specific sizes. If you did just want to put them on and get going or you have the soft jaws that you can machine out accordingly so they're kind of a multi-purpose you can use them once and then again I can't see from here and forgive me how, how does this how does it actually do up the three the three jaw is that a manual three jaw well, what it, no no this is actuated by the draw tube really it's simply drop in central screw opens the legs at the back to the draw tube then you've got three cap heads on the front yep. that's it okay so from Rough from that time how long from uh, Dana putting that on there would that be able to clamp up? A minute. A minute, okay. Now it's your turn, Lindsay. Why don't you take that three jaw off there and put that, that um, I think I'm going to let you have a go because that <laughs> right, that's heavy. The, di the difference yeah, is, is this, one, this one was oversized and we did that for, uh, for a reason, but that one is exact okay. size, so you've got to be, that one won't drop in as easily. Thank you. So up. as simple as? We make sure you line up the pins. That's it. Correct. Yeah. So then there with the mandrel, you're then putting your component over the top yeah. of that. Yeah. And Three again, the, and the activation pin. there to open out the mandrel to secure the part. And uh, what do you mean? Is so it pneum pneumatic? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. Where it's hydraulic. With hydraulic, the, yeah, yeah. hydraulic with the machine. Right. It's okay. all integrated into the chuck. And, and beyond these, the, we've said already at the start that this isn't everything that you do. One, one of the things I saw when I went to Germany was the carbon fibre chucks. Yes, yeah. So, uh, and also, what about your, your gear for the gear cutting mm -hmm. side as well? They're two new things. Could you just give us a very brief uh, overview on those two? Absolutely. Well, you know, Heinberg are a very forward-looking company in terms of work holding. And, you know, I suppose most people know us for the collet chuck, the mandrels, the jaw modules. But another thing that's really coming on now is the gear cutting. And uh, they've, they've been quite sort of so forward looking in here. that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Go, go on. on. No, yeah. you go. You okay. go. Okay, um, guys, don't want you to go anywhere. I want Joe to come and join us because, in the usual style, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a part that's being made by an engineer, mm -hmm. and then you guys, uh, along with Joe, are going to try and guess the cycle time of that part being manufactured. In you come. Mm. Hello. Hi, Not enough room for you. Have to go over there. How was your? You have to go there. Oh, you're going to squish up. That's why I don't think so. How was our tea, Dave? Yeah. It was What's that? What's that interesting. What have you got on your shoes? Unique. You've got something on your shoes. You go, boss. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's cut go to on. it. Cycle time challenge. Yeah, guys, I've got a little bit of a challenge to take back to the studio. I'm at Everage Engineering this morning. Glenn, before we start, what do you always do on a Friday? Watch Wolf and Chips every <laughs> Friday. Great. Now, we're featuring your company this week. We're here. You bought a, a Dugard GTX 625 Axis machine. Before we talk about this part and that, just tell us about the company, what you do, and, you know, why, why others should consider you for their machining. Okay. We're a relatively small subcontract company, but we rely on, or we're good at small volume, high precision parts. Uh, we do a lot of research development work, 
um, lots of the nuclear industry, um, and it's generally where high accuracy is needed um, and fairly quick turnarounds. Okay, now not, not just for us back at, back at base, guys, but for the audience as well that watch Swarf and Chips. We're going to look at this part. Just tell us about the machining. I don't want you to tell us how fast it takes because that's what I'm going to throw back to the, uh, to the studio. So tell us how you go about making it. First operation was done on a five axis machine. It was literally held on less than three miller material in a dripper vise and the whole, all five edges were machined. The, these pockets, which are basically weight relief and as um, appearance. The drilled and tapped holes were all done on the first stop. We didn't do the ends at all, we just machined the ends. Um, it then went on the second five axis machine where we held on the previous machine face and then machined the ends, roughed out all the middle, finished all the middle, drilled and tapped it all. Um, we had a, a special back spot facing tool made where we went through this bore here and back spot face, it's quite a deep spot face. Um, and basically the job came off complete. The last operation um, did some EDM sparking down these two corners here because the customer wanted square corners. Okay, so you, you've seen a significant improvement in the cycle time since you've had this new machine. Back to base, what do you reckon? Oh, oh well, you over to you. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. I don't know, it's a difficult one because it's put it on two machines. Three, well, three, isn't it? Three machine because you've yes. got the EDM at the end. Yeah. Does it include an EDM? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the throughput time, the machining mm. time, the manufacturing time. Uh, you've got to look at how much machine is coming out of the inside of that billet. Is he taking that out of solid? Yes, he's taking that out of solid. I'm just going to guess an hour and a half. Okay, hour and a half. Dave? I'm going to go less. I think probably about 40 minutes, 38, 40 minutes. Okay. Mm, no, Mr. Reynolds? I'm going to go a fair bit more. Yeah. With the EDM process, I'm going to go three hours. Okay, big big uh, differential. I'm not going to go. If it's a game show, I'd go one I'm minute gonna... extra. So if it was over, I'd win. Don't forget, you guys, you need to uh, comment on the video below and, and put your predictive time, and then we're going to announce the, the winner and the right time in next week's show. And you get a prize as well. And you get a prize. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. We do have Thank a gift you. for you as well, because you've joined us here on Swarf and Chips. So you. for Great. your fa favourite you. beverage, Thank you can you. put wine in there. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Can I have a, do, you want another, do you want another cup of tea before yeah, you okay, go? I'll make it. Do you want another cup of tea? Uh, yeah, please, may I have a black tea, but I like it quite weak. Okay, black. Do you, do you not want it with milk? Have you had a milk uh, last time, you? No, I, okay. I'll oh. say no to the milk. Thank okay. you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you. Well, we're Thank off. You, yeah. uh, we're off to uh, technical corner. Oh yeah, you guys go off Come to on. technical corner. Go Easy. on. <laughs> you need to learn lots of, lots of stuff from them. It's technical corner. So for today's technical corner, we're looking at the Typhoon tool. This is a speed increaser from Tagia Tech. Tell us a little bit about it, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. That. It's a speed increaser. Uh, it's driven by three coolant. And it essentially, it does that. It's, it's, it's made to uh, incre increase tool life, increase surface finish. Uh, reduce cycle times and yeah there's two options really you go for this type or you go for the air uh, this one is driven by uh, coolant so go, go, go kind of a step back what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding this into our ATC can it go into yeah, our absolutely changer? it comes with a straight shank HSK cap toe all the usual so the machine if you're talking about the through spindle coolant one you have to have a machine that's obviously got through spindle coolant yeah but anything north of 18k 18 bar rather is, is what they would recommend the uh, the more bar you get the you know the faster the the, the speed increase will go the, the, the biggest question for me, and I'm sure others will be thinking, is w what about the power and the speed here? I mean, you know, can you do a difficult milling operation with a speed well, increase? Well, you can. Like it, this? It, it, you would normally use this for like etching, for engraving, for ball nose finish is a great one, drilling small diameters. Like the largest shank you'll see in this tool is six mil, but really it's probably four mil and below is where it excel. The smaller the tool, the better. Uh, cutting tools are designed, when you go down to one mil and below and four mil and below, they're designed to run really quick and it's very rare. A machine tool can can run, you know, to the to the required speed. We've recently done this at Norgeon Engineers down in the south coast, and they actually had an 18k spindle, which is pretty quick, isn't it? 18k, uh, and it was an eight-hour cycle time. But using this technology, they actually got it up to uh, 50,000 RPM, and it was four hours. It's actually less than four hours, so they reduced the cycle time by more than 50 percent. So that's a good example of an application where they've saved a significant amount of time. Exactly. Is it a roughing tool in a big slab of titanium? No, it's not. But it's when the limiting factor is the spindle speed, 
you should look at this type of thing. What, what, what about the tool chain? Did we go into that? Is it HSK? Is it BT40? Yeah, all the usual, all the usual. Capto, HSK, BT, DIN, straight shank. So I guess you could put, you could stick it in a, a different tool hold if, if you wish. One of the things I picked up from your piece here as well is about the the, um, the coolant clearing the swarf. That's quite a big factor, isn't it? Because you, it, you know, it's it a is. problem. Yeah, it is. If you're ball nosing, or if you're getting into the bottom of a, a pocket, for instance, you're trying to finish a wall right in the bottom. Swarf's always going to be an issue. But the beauty is, some of this, pre some of the coolant, it's got to go somewhere. This coolant, hasn't it? So obviously, it gets extinguished at the front of the uh, here, on the front here. It comes out at the front and it evaporates all the chips. Another point to mention, that's actually a shrink collet there. So you can actually put shrink tool in them. So if we are doing mold and dye, some medical mold and dye, we've got to get in deep pockets and do some ribs. In the aerospace sector, it's perfect. I also noticed this. This here. This is the DRO. What, yeah, what, yeah. What's that, that telling us? Well, that will go on the side of the machine, and it works. Uh, I'm not an electrical engineer, but it's, it basically works on radio waves, and it, it basically tells you what it's doing. So how fast is it running? Because obviously, uh, your coolant pressure can fluctuate. As long as it doesn't fluctuate a great deal, it doesn't matter. But that would that would tell, at Nord John that was going like from forty from forty eight k up to about fifty two k from memory. So really, we're talking about ball nosing, um, drilling. Uh, mm -hmm. Simple operations engraving, maybe this could this could be used. I want to I want to stress as well though this isn't a replacement for a high speed machining oh, centre. No, 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 it's no, it's no. very important to to put that point across. You can buy machining centres with 18, 30,000, 40,000 spindles or whatever they might be. That is going to be different to using one of these. Yeah, if, if you're doing the same job day in day, you're probably going to spec a 50k spindle. I know there's not many out there, but you're going to spec a, a high speed spindle machine tool. But if you're an SME, if you're a subcontractor, you're not quite sure of the next job. This is perfect. These are, you know, they vary in price, but let's say this one's somewhere in the region of three thousand pounds. You know, another another point to mention: this is going at fifty thousand RPM. Your machine tool's running at zero, so you, you know you're prolonging the life of your spindle as well. Correct. So if you've got an eighteen k spindle worth anywhere between twenty and thirty k for for a spindle replacement. You're prolonging the life of that. You don't want to be running to 18K unless you really have to for a long period of time. So, you know, you can have two or three of these. You know, you can, you know, if you're doing a three mil ball nose and a two mil, then a one mil, we could have three of these at the price and just stick them in your tool changer. You could have more work for a, for a uh, let's say, a machining centre that's got 12,000 RPM than you potentially are one that's going to need Quite. some machine at 50,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you buy the machining centre and add Quite. this yeah. to it. So this has been the technical corner on the Typhoon uh, tool holder, speed increaser from Tegia Tech. Now over to Mark. MTD on location. Lee, I'm not at Swarf and Chips filming today because you kindly invited us to the AMRC. Now you guys partner the AMRC for many years. You've got some very, very big machines here, but you've got something a little bit different behind us. That's right, Mark. We, we've got seven machines on site now, ranging from a 100 ton table load capability down to the small S191 machine, which as you can see from from these components is, is, for, is for small part machining. So does that mean sort of medical watch industries, any others? It's exactly that. The, the, the main industry for, for this machine was born out of the watch industry in Switzerland. It's been developed um, very successfully into the medical markets and latterly into the aerospace markets, particularly with fuel systems, avionics. We're even looking at small blades and other components as well now. And is that a big market for the UK? We think so. This, this is a new market for us, as you, as you said earlier. We're, we're mostly uh, we're well known for, for large machines. So this takes us into a new arena. And um, yeah, so far we've found a number of companies with some very interesting uh, applications and challenges. So your technology days are very much about showing the machines, the capabilities and, and how to best use them. Well, this machine's been installed recently and we're looking now for, um, for projects, projects and challenges for, for UK customers. So it's small precision parts from metals or composite materials where we're looking at uh, single setup machining. So bar fed or loaded to a chuck, sub spindle picks up, finishes the part off, puts it on a, on a, on a tray or, or an automation system and takes it away. So unmanned machining of complex, very accurate components. And I suppose it takes you into a slightly different sort of industry to bring potential customers to the AMRC rather than your larger machines. Well, it does, and it's a new area for AMRC as well. So we're hoping we can bring people into AMRC, develop processes on UK soil for UK markets. We also have other machines with similar capabilities in Switzerland and Germany. So we've got a, a wide pool of, of technologies available to develop these processes on. Well, good luck, Lee. Well, that's enough from me. See you back in the studio. MTD Network. We're on a bit of a road trip and we popped in to see Glenn from BCMZ Precision Engineering. Thanks for having us along. First of all, a quick overview of the machine shop, please. 
Uh, we have a lathe section which has got multi-axis lathes in, sliding heads with three metre bar feeds, fixed heads with uh, multi, uh, multi-feed half bars, metre and a half. Uh, we have a milling section with numerous mills, Doosans, Brother VMCs and uh, Bridgeports or Hardinge um, VMCs up to three plus two. Um, so fully kit out machine shop, you can do your one-offs up to sort of 30,000 batch run 24-7 and lights out machining? Yes, we cover all of that. We do have another section that does the prototype, small batch runs, um, as well as, you say, up to 30,000 a month. Um, and we do run 24-7. I keep saying 30,000 because that's what on your website, but, and you know, large batch runs. Also notice the, uh, the Vogard. Yes, put that on the, on the uh, sliding Ooh. heads. The recycling of the, la- of the coolant is essential because so much comes out through this wharf conveyor and fantastic little bit of kit, very cheap, very efficient. Yeah, that's right, simple but really works well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But back to your machine shop, let's see some of your components, shall we? Well, we've got various parts here, we cover a wide range of industries. You've got some connector parts, uh, this is an assembly that we made um, for one company, multi-start thread parts go together, yeah. splined, internal broaching, various mills. Um, uh, not a simple part by the sound of it. <laughs> very simple to us uh, on the machinery we have. Yeah. Um, what's, this, what's this here? These are parts that go inside computers, uh, different materials we machine. This is aluminium, copper. Um, these parts get machined either on the Brothers or the Doosan. Yep. Uh, and the the actual finish, very, very high Very high finish yeah. on it because it has to have good uh, connection with what's touching it. Yeah. Um, and we obviously take care of the plating so the customer gets a completed part coming back into so it. So complete solution. Now, I'm interested in this, this part here. It looks like a, maybe some sort of comb. It is. This is a heat sink, again, going inside a computer. Um, very good part done in two operations. First stop. Second up again, high finish, surface finish needed on it. Yeah. Uh, the finning is carried out um, using a slitting saw. And I understand that you work closely with the tooling suppliers because yes. to get a solution. You use a couple of tooling suppliers yeah. um, to get this. And in actual fact, one of them supplied us with a slitting saw that knocked the cycle time from 30 minutes down to 10 minutes to put those fins in. Pretty impressive stuff. What about this part here? This is a part, again, this is done on the larger Nakamura, um, stainless steel, 316 stainless. We do the majority of the turning, holes, milling on there, and then we have to put it up uh, onto the Doosan just to finish this last um, milling operation and holes in it. Other than that, it comes off the lathe complete. Got various other part, another part here that is um, has some form of electronics going inside of it. Uh, again, we machine this on the Doosan and this part on the Brother that has engraving on it. Um, this is then goes away for plating and painting um, and then goes out to the customer. Glenn, that's great insight, not only to the machine shop, I mean, it's all coming together, even you know the, the sort of simpler components like the, the Vogue, I call it simple, but it works really well. But Some of these parts, really, really impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chip Chat. So we've got three minutes to find out this week's highlight. All videos are all on the website, all in full, so you can watch those on there. So to kickstart, I was there when this actually was filmed. Measurement Solutions, it's a a scanner on a robotic arm. It's a CMM. It's a portable CMM. Nine axis, is it seven axis or nine axis? Uh, Nine, I think. And you do the, prog- the, the, the there's one programming way of doing this, isn't it? It's just from you program the the CMM, which also talks to the robot, which is unique because obviously normally you'd have a, a a robot programmed and you'd have the software programmed, and obviously that's two programs. But this, the, whereas this one's integrated, it's all in one. Next to Trump Open House, I know we're talking about, I visited here, there was 250 people visited this place in three days. One of the highlights was the combination machine between 
uh, the laser cutter and the punch machine How many together. people offer that type of solution? Uh, th th there's a few, but Trump have value engineered this machine, so it's very, very cost effective. Mm. It's affordable for small to medium sized businesses. And I like the van, well. how you interrupted. I, I, I like the van as well. In fact, I've got one. Not a Trump one, something else. <laughs> <laughs> and last but by no means at least, PTS right angled holders. Um, is being driven, coolant driven something unique in the industry, or is that a product that's out in the moment? Um, I, hand on heart, I don't know if it's unique, but it's certainly it's a good sales point. You need you need a roughly well, anything north of fifteen uh, bar coolant pressure, and it's basically it replaces a fourth axis. Okay, there's certain applications you may want a fourth axis, but it can it can mill. It certainly drill holes. So if you're drilling holes on a, on a component outside of a component like this, it, it's perfect. It's enabling for that. you to automate, and the beauty about mm. this system is it fits into all shanks as well. So. What I did learn from this video is even if you wanted to use it with a VDI tool holder on a lathe, you could mm -hmm. too, yeah. which is, which is you know, it is brilliant. And I think while we're on this as well, I was going to mention BDL. Uh, mm -hmm. BDL um, has have supplied 17 machine tools to that company over yes. recent years. Brilliant video. Go to the website and watch it. They've just bought a new UMC 755 axis machine as well. Did a full tour. They've got ST15, ST35 lathes. It's a really good company. It's a tier one supplier it, to the it, aerospace. It was industry. interesting. They've got two... The, the, Basically, the two different solutions on five axes. Correct. Where they had the, where they had the, the, the VF model with the, the you know the modular table, and now they've gone to the full yeah, full blend five axes. Quite a lot of yeah, it's a good client to have that. Yeah. All videos. Can we get any more? Can no, no, you haven't got time. Now? We don't have time on the show. All videos can be found on the website. Deal of the week. The engineering technology group are putting together some bundle deals on their machine tools one of which is the Nakamura AS200 what we're looking at here and in fact I've got the bundles here in my uh, in my hand firstly tell us about this Nakamura machine and what it is and the size etc uh, yes this machine is the uh, AS200 uh, LMYS machine so you've got a 8 inch chuck uh, 65 bar capacity uh, the max length of part on this is uh, 800 mil that be turn, is that turning length? Yeah, that's turning length, yeah. And is that because this is the L version, it's that longer bed? Yeah, it's the long bed version, yeah. So there's three versions. There's a short bed, uh, there's a long bed tail stock, and a long bed uh, sub-spindle machine. So they're the versions, but you've also got the Y-axis on these machines, you? which is an integral part of the AS range, correct? Yes, that's correct. They've all got a 15 station turret with live tooling and also a Y-axis, yes. What is the dimension of that Y-axis? What's the scope? Uh, yeah, it's uh, plus or minus 41 mil from the center line. Okay, now with, with these bundles, the, uh, the principal idea here is that we have, a, we have a, a Nakamura machine and it comes with a certain amount of options and it's sold at a competitive price and you put three bundles together is that correct yeah that's correct yes so um, the first bundle basically is a chucking machine which will be on the long bed version uh, the second bundle will be effectively on the long bed version again with the tail stock which will be um, that will be with a bar feed uh, package uh, and the third one is the long bed sub spindle version as a bar feed package. So, what, what, what's the advantage to the to the, the customer about buying into one of these bundles? Are they getting a, a better deal? Uh, yeah, the, we've uh, we've priced them so that they're very competitive in the marketplace for the three bundles that we're doing for that specification machine. Okay, now it's important to say at this point as well, if you go to the Engineering Technology Group's website, you can see exactly in detail what is available on each bundle and the price. Yeah. John, I want to come back to the Nakamura brand because you're, you're, yeah. you're business development manager, so you're out on the road talking to engineers, yeah. you're selling these machines regularly. What do you promote? What do you pitch? What's good about them? Um, we promote the fact that you know it's the Nakamura brand, uh, the reliability of the machine, the accuracy, uh, a lot of people know the Nakamura brand out there, uh, you know, it speaks for quality. So what we are saying here is that the Engineering Technology Group have currently got bundle deals on their AS200 range. There's three bundles. I've got a lot of the detail here, but you're better off going to the website engtechgroup.com to find out more. Thanks for watching this week's Sporf and Chips. Now, for you to enter the competition, do not forget to put your cycle time in the comments below and join us next week where you will be finding out the winner. Next week, we're live from Proto Labs. It's going to be a brilliant takeover show as well. And as we always say, don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe, and keep those spindles turning.